Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is uh, Black Spartan 504 uh, coming out of New Orleans. Uh, first video I'm making uh, about my tank. Just started it up. Actually, um, it's about six weeks old now. The uh, reason I started it up was, was for my daughter. She's always on me if I go into the aquarium. Uh, she's four years old. We have a membership, but she always wants to go. And so one day I said, you know, baby, what if we, you know, what if we brought the aquarium home? Yeah, Daddy, let's do it. So uh, I thought it was a good idea. Little did I know the amount of work it was going to take to get this thing get this thing started. But um, figured I'd just make a video. I've seen a whole bunch of videos online that helped me out a lot getting started. Read a bunch of books. Well, a couple of books. Um, I'm starting the aquarium. Um, visited a few of my local fish stores, fish shops. Um, talk with a few guys at work uh, that have both freshwater and saltwater aquariums. So did a lot before actually uh, starting this thing. But you can see at this point I got a few fish in. Um, a couple of uh, clownfish there. You can see uh, my flame hawkfish. My daughter's got names for all of them. Um, and you can see here inside there I'm not sure if you can make him out but I got a coral banded shrimp in there and somewhere swimming around is a uh, neon dotty back uh, and there you can see he was on top of this rock maybe I'll post a video I took when I first put him in but uh, a rose rose anemone which right now I guess he doesn't feel like being on top so he's just kind of hanging out on the sides. But he was uh, sitting on this rock right up top yesterday and had uh, looked pretty good um, uh, after I initially put him in. So he looks to be okay. Our parameters are still pretty good. So I'll talk to the tank a little bit. Um, so it's a 75 gallon uh, Aquion tank. Uh, that I purchased from one of the local fish stores. I got a 950 uh, GPH sump pump, a couple of uh, my uh, circulation pumps or uh, hydrocorelias. Uh, they're pretty good. I think I'm getting enough, uh, getting plenty as you can see water flow over the top. There I have them uh, set to uh, alternate every 45 seconds right now left to right combined with you know what's coming out from this sump I got pretty good pretty good flow keeps things suspended pretty well um, one thing I did do uh, I do have my sump I'll show you the sump down here uh, wait before I do that so I purchased I went kind of light on the uh, on the lights initially kind of cheap I got this Akira Modular LED which I've only got the one bulb right now I'll probably get uh, the Beauty Max and maybe one more Daylight Ball, maybe a Color Max, I'm not sure yet. Not ready for corals yet. Obviously, it's still a young tank. Um, but, in the sub here, and I'll explain to you why I kind of went cheap on the, uh, the lighting. I think those of you all that have been doing this for a while will probably understand. Uh, in the sump, I do have um, kind of splurs that I purchased the... Uh, um, Neptune Apex Gold controller. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> if you don't have a controller, this thing makes my life so much easier keeping track of this. Um, you know, just being able to, to manage it um, and know what's going on even when I'm at work in the office or just around the house, just feeding them. It's easy just to push a button or stop the skimmer or stop a, you know, the sump pump or whatever when it's time to feed them or time to do maintenance or whatever. And I'd have to reach down and screw around with these plugs, which still got a little bit of work to do on the cord, cord maintenance piece, but like I said, I've only had it a short period of time. We're kind of cheap on a protein skimmer. I got this, um, what is this thing? Seacone 100. Yeah, it's the cheap one. Um, and it's only been running for uh, about 10 hours now, actually. So I just, what I did before actually running it, 
read a few articles on it, people complaining about it. Went and purchased the uh, this brass valve, a needle valve, to replace the one that comes with it. Pretty cheap. Um, and I'll tell you, it hasn't even been 24 hours yet. They say about 24 hours. I'm actually starting to get um, you know, the air bubbles in the top of the skimmer. There. I just replaced the filter side back. It is for right now. Maybe I should have should have soaked it uh, initially. But um, I tell you what, that valve. You see the bubbles there? It makes all the difference in the world on that skimmer. So I think it's going to be okay. Um, I do have some. I don't know. I got some ketamorpha in the sump, but I also have some fire color uh, I don't know. I'm watching it very closely. I uh, heard a lot about. Horror stories about what can happen with the collective homosexual, so keeping a close eye on that. Um, I mean, it looks okay for now, I think. I mean, those of y'all who may know a little bit more or have more experience than I do, uh, let me know. Um, but it's not white. Doesn't look like it's getting any lighter than it was when I got it. So, like I said, I'm keeping a close eye on it. But, uh, that's uh, that's the sump so far so good. It's doing its job. Um, you know, it's kind of ugly down here, but you know, like we say, we keep it ugly down here to, so it's pretty here, right? So, uh, by the way, my daughter named the hawk for Sunny. They all got names. The clownfish are Sally. That's Sally there. Sally and Dally. The Coral banded shrimp is named Stripes. Um, then I got an emerald crab uh, running around in there somewhere. I don't see it right now. But uh, my daughter named her Sasha. And then the neon dotty back, which I guess if I were to feed them, they'd come out, would be um, that would be uh, Dash. And then the anemone is called Spike. For now so <laughs> she's got names for all of them still very much a work in progress i recently went out and got a, um these a couple of pieces of um, live rock from a local fish shop with some coralline algae also where i bought the anemone um they gave me a few pieces of coralline and i you know crunched up crumbled up and then dropped into the tank you can see i don't know if you can see on the rock there few pieces of a few spots of purple that have started um, I'm using this stuff I'm sure y'all familiar with called purple up uh, for now and it's helping to uh, propagate the coralline algae um, I do have some I think it looks like on the back there are some green coralline algae as well which I think is pretty rare I initially started the tank with uh, 50 pounds of uh, Pukani dry rock that I purchased and I used uh, Dr. Tim's one and only along with uh, a couple other brands of nitrifying bacteria to get the cycle started. Uh, it worked out pretty well for me. It, it cycled in like two weeks which was you know, pretty quick. And I did uh, a uh, 20 gallon water change which is about 20, roughly 22, almost 25%. I got a couple marks on the side. I took the time to, uh, it's kind of tough to see. Uh, yeah, with uh, electrical tape, so I can tell, you know, my 10 gallon and 20 gallon mark. I just use a utility pump to pump out into a couple of boot 44 gallon trash cans on, on wheels that I have. Um, maybe I'll make another video, or maybe go and, and film the RODI unit. I bought a Spectra Pure um, four stage reverse osmosis deionizer unit for my water. Goodbye. Because, you know, going and paying for salt water at the fish shop is, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Which is easy to do here. I just use the utility, you know, make the water up, use the utility pump, got a separate heater, mix it up myself, do my water changes. I just pump out down to that tape mark and pump right out of the trash can back into here. It's quick, fast, doesn't take me any time. I'm using the uh, Red Sea uh, Pro Salt. Uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, you can see 
Right now, my temperature went up a little bit, um, which my controller is telling me. Uh, probably because I got both the lights on right now. But as you can see, Celine is pretty good. I did, you know, go ahead and splurge a little bit. I bought a, uh, not splurge, but purchased a um, um, refractometer to test the salinity. Uh, and then, you know, once I calibrated the, uh, the controller there, um, that makes it a whole lot easier too. A um, little high on salt, but I probably need to top off. I got my little tape mark on or something to let me know when I'm going too low. You can see the probes. I got into something with the magnet. I got the holder for all the probes. It's the uh, temperature probe, pH probe, salinity, and then the uh, ORP. Which for me really means nothing right now. But uh, what when I say means nothing, you know that what is it, oxygen reducing potential, whatever it stands for. I really don't use it right now. It's mainly the other three that I use. But uh, so far so good. Um, my bio load didn't spike too much. I actually added the fish, you know, over the course of a few weeks. I added the two clownfish initially together. And actually, I just picked up the uh, the anemone yesterday. And it's just a little baby. Like I said, it was up on top before. Um, it doesn't feel like being violent right now, so it's hanging out down at the bottom. I wish the neon dotty back would come out. He's always in the rock someplace. You can see I got, I think I got pretty good, uh, try to do a good job. Um, doing a little aquascaping, putting the rock together. I used, you can see little bits of uh, epoxy there there to kind of keep there and there to kind of keep the rock together you know make a little got a couple caves going um, a lot of places to hide in there like that's why you can see the neon dotty back is in there the other side in there somewhere but uh, I cannot see them and I tell you what when they don't want to be seen same thing with the flame hawkfish there's some spots inside oh there he is there's dash Neon Dottie back coming out to see what's up. Kind of at the end there. I need to get that little piece of seaweed out. It's, it's time to eat, actually. They know it. So they're anticipating me uh, dropping some food in there. That's probably why he's out there. Anyway, they seem to be pretty happy. Um, I bought a bunch of snails off reef cleaners. Uh, a few of them, a few of them died. Um, but most of them, most of them lived. You can see one of the hermit crabs back here. I did buy some new shells for them. I tell you, that made a huge difference. As soon as I bought those shells, I didn't realize. I bought a few extra mediums and some large shells. Man, I had a bunch of them switch out shells like immediately. Um, but you can see up top there, I got a bunch of snails in there. And I think I got like 14 hermit crabs running around in this thing somewhere. Uh, went on reef cleaners and told them what I was doing, what size tank I had, kind of what I had done so far. They gave me a recommendation for a cleaner package. A uh, bunch of snails and hermit crabs and the, the one uh, embryo crab for now. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Any suggestions? Hey man, I'm open to them. Like I said, I'm new to this. If you have maybe something constructive you can offer, I'd appreciate it. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you do have something critical to say, I would ask that you do so, you know, in a decent manner. Don't be a troll. But, uh, or a, uh, you know, a keyboard ranger, tough guy behind your keyboard, that kind of thing. Um, I appreciate any any critical, you know, suggestions you guys can make, just be cordial about it, if you like a better term. Anyway, um, I'd appreciate that. But, uh, like I said, it's still a work in progress. Uh, if you got any questions about anything, um, or suggestions, or even tips that I could offer in my, uh, you know, from my minimal experience thus far, I'd be more than happy to, to offer it. Yeah. That's it in a nutshell, my new 75-gallon uh, reef tank.
just getting things started. Can't wait to put some coral in here and some other some other livestock. So y'all take it easy.